Here's five dream changes I'd like to personally see to Total War, whether that's in Warhammer 3 right now or with future Total War games. Let's go! First thing I'd like to see is more ways to win. Now what do I mean by this? Well, a couple of things. Relating to campaign objectives, at the moment we have our short and long objectives and firstly it really annoys me that the short objectives don't have a victory screen and thus they don't really mean anything and that only a long victory will actually get you that feeling of completion with the campaign victory screen popping up which personally I do like to try and hit. I know not everyone cares about that. A lot of people though I know do play really short campaigns. They only want to play for 50 to 100 turns and then move on. Why can we just not get a victory screen here to give some finality to the campaign? And as for the long campaign objectives, I think they're a little too long in a certain way. I found in this campaign, for example, Astrogoth, I've done all the other objectives at this point. I'm pretty much done with this campaign. I'm super powerful. I've got loads of money and everything. But if I want to actually finish the campaign with a victory screen, I need to sack another 30 settlements. And at this point in the campaign when I'm super powerful, it's just not really that enjoyable. So sacking 30 more settlements just sounds like a big ass chore. And the same thing with this Greenskins campaign. I've conquered tons of land. I've done all the victory objectives up to this point for the long victory, except for Occupy, Loot, Raise, a certain amount of settlements. Again, nearly 30 settlements this time. And well, I just can't be bothered. I do want to hit that victory screen, but I've just got to go through this chore of arbitrarily taking random settlements. So at least I'd like to see short campaign victory objectives actually get a victory screen and some improvements to the longer ones as well. But what I'd really like is something that used to be in even Rome 2 many, many years ago. It's multiple ways to win a campaign. We've got a military victory, an economic victory, a cultural victory, each offering you a slightly different way to win the campaign and thus a different way to play the campaign. And this is way better for replayability of a campaign as you could play it three times in three different ways rather than just the one set of static objectives that we have now for campaigns. And of course, modders have already done this. Victory Conditions Overhaul mod here is pretty much what I just described. In this case for Norska, the Ragnarok Victory Conditions, attain level 3 allegiance with the Dark God, that's easy enough, doesn't take forever, defeat all the challenges, blah blah blah, and then you get Campaign Victory, or the World Walker route, which is basically an expansionist route, go and take a bunch of places, that's another way to win, another way to play, or probably the best one here for Norska is Where's My Palico? It's all about the monster hunts and that's your entire campaign narrative and objective is just to hunt monsters. Here's some other random ones from other campaigns. Here's Miao Ying, Missing Sister, Shen Zhu, Dragon of Light. You've basically got to go around the map and search dark fortresses for Shen Zhu. So it's kind of giving you some narrative, a reason to go around and search these places, not just, hey, please can you go over there and take out that random faction for no reason whatsoever? Thank you. We've got a bit of purpose. Here's one of Xiao Ming's victory conditions, all about making money. Have a gross income of 25 grand, have a trade income of 13 grand. And this is kind of maybe a bit of a longer victory objective, but when you've got that kind of specific goal to aim for, I think it probably stays more fun. And one for Kostolten here for Kislev, pretty much just unite Kislev. Take the three main Kislev cities, get all the supporters, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you get the idea. There's a lot of better things they could do with the campaign victory conditions, not forcing us to play the campaign for so long as well to get that victory screen. That would be smashing. Like the sponsor of today's video, Enlisted. A free-to-play World War II multiplayer shooter available on PC, Xbox and PlayStation with cross-platform play between all them as well. Now, if you're like me and you prefer to be an infantryman in these kind of multiplayer shooters, there's tons of weapons to mess around with, from the common obvious guns to some more rarely seen prototype weapons. Or if you prefer vehicles, you've got tank warfare for blowing away the poor infantryman like me, and air vehicles for controlling the skies. Enlisted also aims for historical authenticity with equipment, uniforms, vehicles and locations, many of which can be used to customise you and your boys before you head into battle. So plenty of ways to play to find your playstyle. So you'll be taking all of that into large scale combat with dozens of soldiers, whether that's in multiplayer or in the campaigns, which are distinct historical battles such as the invasion of Normandy. So if you like the look of Enlisted, check it out, there's a link in the description. And if you use that link to sign up, you'll get three days of premium time, several troop and weapon orders to help you on your way. Thanks to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Next, I think it's high time we got some sliders or more toggleable things at the start of a campaign. Now we've had a little bit of this arrive in Warhammer 3 with the sea lanes and the old endgame scenarios, and that's great. That's a good start to what could add even more sandbox fun to your Total War Immortal Empires campaigns. 
And of course, this is something that's pretty standard in a lot of other strategy games. Stellaris here, for example. Imagine we could tune AI aggressiveness, or maybe how much money the AI gets so that they can't have 19 armies from one settlement. And yes, we can do this by changing the campaign difficulty, but we've only got five options and we can't tailor the things we do and don't like to really create the campaign that we individually would like to play. Another strategy games, Age of Empires here, we can just toggle all this stuff to make the game how we want. This is only for a skirmish, not for a campaign, but the same idea, or having a randomize button. There are mods for Warhammer 3 that allow you to randomly change your start position of whatever lord you choose, or to randomly move everybody on the map around. Those are pretty fun, and should be standard in Total War games, I think. But sliders for things kind of already are in Warhammer 3, they just decided to put it in a pointless game mode that nobody wants to play, rather than at the start of a campaign where we could actually have some fun with it. Now of course some of this stuff in the infinite portal we don't really want on our campaigns, I'm sure nobody wants to play a campaign of low gravity for example, but what about damage? Maybe a damage slider so that if I find battles too quick I can bring the damage down and make them last longer, or maybe I find them too slow, I could turn it up with 1.5 damage, make the battles go a bit quicker. Or maybe I could put the unit size up, maybe just to like times two, because times 10 is ridiculous and doesn't function, but yeah, some of these things could be really cool just as an option at the start of a campaign to again allow us to tailor the experience to how we would like. Next, I'd like to see sensible diplomacy. Just having things make a bit more sense and to be less random. Mostly to do with the old anti-player bias of factions coming after you even though they don't really have a good reason to and there's bigger enemies nearer to them which they probably should declare war on rather than me. Or like this kind of thing, I'm playing as Azag who is like in the middle of the map and then Miao Ying who is all the way on the far east of the map is threatening me with war if I don't give her money, like you're nowhere near me. You're never gonna be anywhere near me. This was a completely pointless interaction. All those good old situations where one of your enemies marches across five of its enemies' territories to get to you just to declare war on you and attack you rather than those other ones that are actually their neighbours and are much more of a threat to them than I am. And then there's just a sometimes randomly getting declared war on by a faction you've done absolutely nothing to. It would be good if there was more reason or you had to have more of a reason and justification for declaring war on somebody. Like in Age of Wonders 4 which I recently played, you have to have war justifications. You can't just randomly declare war on people and expect no consequences. You have to kind of build up these grievances which then allow you to commit a justified war. And that just kind of creates a more personal feeling between the wars as well. But I appreciate maybe the AI is limited here, I don't know anything about the technical side of whether this kind of thing is possible, how easy it is to improve the AI of Total War Diplomacy, I'm sure it's not that easy by any means, but whether it's possible with the current engine, I have no idea. But it would be fantastic if it was. But overall it would just be a big improvement if we could have less of that anti-player bias, which I know they have worked on and it has got better over Warhammer 3. And I think Three Kingdoms actually had some pretty cool diplomacy stuff that I'd like to see in other future Total Wars as well, so yeah. Diplomacy improvements would be very much appreciated. Next, it's that damn battle AI I would love to see some improvements to. And I'm not expecting the world here because I'm sure it's incredibly complex and difficult to program a battle AI. And hey, occasionally the AI does some smart stuff like here charging its silver helms into demigriffs, but then it puts some healing on the silver helms to even the matchup. Or here, my cavalry coming around to destroy some Bretonian archers, but then it sends its grail knights to stop them. But it kind of feels like those things are more luck than judgement, like it just happened to charge into my cavalry there rather than it understood that it needed to protect its missiles. But fixes to a few of the main big issues would be fantastic, like the blobbing issue, how the AI just runs all its units into the back of each other if there's some kind of choke point, or sometimes not even a choke point, just a front line, the units will clump up and it's just super easy to drop a spell or use artillery to just blow that blob up. And then it's just a boringly easy win, which you kind of feel stupid for if you don't take advantage of it, but you kind of feel dirty if you do take advantage of it. So you either need the AI to understand the concept of waiting until there's room to attack, or to pathfind round a different way to get behind the enemy, and just to flank. And they do this in sieges, if there's a closed gate and an open gate, if you tell a unit to go inside, it'll pathfind to the open gate. So it's kind of that same sort of idea. Whether that's applicable to an open field battle AI, I don't know, but that would be nice. Another big issue is suicidal AI lords that charge themselves in with complete disregard for their own safety. They try to kill your lord, they charge behind your lines, so their enemy lines, straight into whatever the hell is there. They don't care if there's a bunch of units that are perfectly designed to take it down, they just charge into it. And as the most important unit on the field, they should have a bit more self-awareness that they really need to stay alive. And when they sit there just taking tons of missile damage, they should probably try and get out of there. 
So either they need to kind of learn to retreat when they take a large amount of damage very quickly, or maybe they need to learn to retreat when they're inside a lot of firing arcs of enemy units. As I say, I have complete ignorance on the subject of battle AI, so I don't know if that's possible, but again, it's the same thing as the blobbing. You kind of feel stupid for not taking advantage of it, but you kind of feel dirty when you just instantly kill the enemy lord right at the start of the battle. It would also be really good if the AI understood the concept of protecting its missiles, putting a spear unit or a cavalry unit with its missiles so they don't just end up like this by themselves, getting mowed down by cavalry. Especially as missiles are one of the strongest, most dangerous parts of any army, especially for those factions that have particularly strong missiles. Protecting them is incredibly important, but the AI basically never does it. It'd also be good if they learn to flank a bit better to get after your missiles so that you need to protect them. Sometimes they do, they're kind of okay at it, sometimes some factions, but other times you've got your flanks wide open, they could easily just walk infantry round to get after your missiles, but they don't. And again, that's kind of the blobbing issue, the pathfinding issue. They don't really seem to understand the concept of just running around to get behind stuff. But those are three of the big main issues. There are some other ones, like they sometimes send just parts of their army in by themselves, or they charge their cavalry into spears and leave them there. I'm sure there's lots of little things, and it would be great if they could play like a human, but that is probably unrealistic to imagine, at least for now on the engine that they're on. Maybe in the future, if they get a better engine, and with all the crazy stuff people are doing with AI these days, who knows what's possible? But it's kind of funny looking back, I've been playing some Rome 2 recently and I noticed a lot of the same AI issues like this. It's a minor settlement, there's all these different ways the AI could go, but they decide to just charge all down one way into one little choke point. They're even charging their missile units in here for some reason rather than using them as missile units, but that's battle AI for you. They could just think themselves lucky I don't have a foot of gawk here. So yeah, I'd love to see some AI improvements to make the battles more challenging rather than them doing it through stat buffs and things like that and leadership buffs. But no doubt, that's a tall order. To my final thing then, no buff campaigns. Now what the hell does that mean? Well, you know Lord's skill points and items and all the things that can buff your units up to give them more melee defense, melee attack, leadership, armor, whatever. These things make the units and Lords and heroes way more powerful than they normally would be from their baseline. This means that you can make a faction function not really like it's supposed to. You can make Skaven slaves that will actually hold out quite a while and be almost tanky, shall we say. Which doesn't make sense because that's not how Skaven slaves are supposed to be, right? Or you can turn your legendary lore just into a ridiculous powerhouse, like old Deathmaster Snitch here with his 80 melee attack, 104 melee defense, 567 weapon strength, armor piercing, bonus versus large. Ridiculous. Personally, one of the things I always loved about multiplayer was that you just got the factions as they were supposed to be, as they were designed by Games Workshop and how they are in tabletop. They have a faction identity, shall we say, and that gets lost in campaign when you start buffing things up to high heaven and making them not perform how they usually normally would. So it would be nice if there was an option as a toggleable thing at the start of a campaign, back to my second point, that allows you to turn off all the buffs that units get so that the armies can function how they were designed to function. And there's actually, once again, a mod that does just that. Nerfageddon is a mod that takes away the red skill line from Lords so that you can't buff up units in this way, at least not until level 50, then you unlock the red skill line, but the buffs on it are much less than they normally are, so it's only incremental in the unit's performance. You can still unlock the abilities and stuff, and its aim is literally to make the game like multiplayer, as I was saying. So the factions should maintain their identity much better. For example, Skaven Slaves will be a cheap, crappy, expendable unit that will quickly route throughout an entire campaign, rather than them becoming nearly unbreakable by turn 50 against most Skaven factions that you ever face. So yeah, I'd really like that as a toggleable option. I've been playing this mod a little bit recently. Honestly, I'd probably play it all the time if I didn't make videos on Total War for people who mostly play vanilla. And perhaps I'm in the minority here that would prefer Total War to be this way. And it's not that I don't like how Total War is really. And I know a lot of people enjoy getting all the buffs and stuff and that's fine. But again, like I say, toggleable option. Just give me the option as a player to choose that whilst keeping the old vanilla version. The Total War has always been, to be fair, that's always how Total War is, buffing your units up. But with Warhammer, there's so much diversity between the factions and it's nice to maintain that by not buffing everything and having everything get skewed and crazy and all over the place and not really knowing what any faction is really capable of. But there we go, five dream changes for me for Total War going forward. Also, don't forget to check out the link in the description for Enlisted. If you sign up using that link, you will get that tasty free stuff, giving you a little bit of a head start. And a thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.